Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Rocket taking a day. We're jumping back to some more all the mod seven to the sky. I hope you guys are ready. Now jumping right in. The first thing I did today was I decided to go ahead and uh, do a little remodel of uh, the Twilight Forest and make the entrance actually functional. And so this is where we actually spawn in when I go to the Twilight Forest. And I decided to hollow out the walls, which is really nice because this tree is actually big enough to have the inside of it hollowed out like that, allowing you to customize the inside. This is, this is perfect. And so I have an elevator that leads up here. And as you can see, I have all of my Ars Nouveau stuff or Ars Nouveau just lined up right here. Look at that, ready to go. So anytime I wanna mess with this stuff, which we are gonna get back into real soon, this is the place to do it. And I'm gonna be uh, adding more to the outside here because we're gonna need a lot more area to mess around with for this mod. So we do have a world that is technically an overworld. It's just always dark here or like slightly dark, like right on the verge of being dark. So last episode, I mentioned how we were going to go back and mine up that unobtainium, but I wanted fortune first. Oh boy. Okay, so problem already. I think we have to have a vibranium sword first or a vibranium pickaxe. Okay, so we might wait on this. Yeah, look at this. This thing spawned on the roof. Like out of all the places. I think if I drop it down, it should land on that and break. Perfect. It did. I did mention in the video that I did find it, but yeah, it was it was on the roof, which makes sense because where your spawn points at is where this thing should spawn if it does go through that portal. Well, with that out of the way, I thought it was going to be mining some vibranium. It, it doesn't really matter that we've not mined it per se, because the vibranium or, or sorry, the unobtainium is, uh, well, let's just say it's not super useful or used really by anything at the moment other than late game stuff. So I'm not super worried about it. It does make for some really, really powerful armor, but we're not going to obtain any of that at the moment. However, this stuff behind me, I think it's time we get into upgrading this and sort of changing the way this works and getting ourselves a more permanent system. And that involves getting into a new mod from Direwolf himself, Laser IO. Now over here, I have a list of items that we are going to need to be sieved. And thankfully we can make a really, really nice setup with all of these items right here. Um, and actually make it a little bit more compact now that we can get into the mod laser IO. So I set up some auto crafting here for some of the items that are in this mod. Uh, the main thing you're going to need to make a bunch of are these raw logic, logic chips and you have to smelt them. Everything is all set up for that. Um, and everything's all ready to go. So first things first, let's kind of get an understanding of how this mod works. So this right here is laser IO. I'm going to try my best to explain this. Um, now. Or what I have right here is I have a, uh, a node that is connected to another node by shift right clicking here and then clicking here, it will link these together. So these are two connected nodes. However, um, you can actually send items from this chest to this chest using a single node. You don't actually have to have a network. This makes a network of nodes and you can continue to connect them together. By default, I'm gonna show you you can send an item from this chest to this chest. It's super simple. We're gonna need an item card and we just place the item card here. I'm gonna place an item card here. And the reason I place it on this side is because it makes it a little easier so you don't have to look and see what direction you're facing. But this is south. And if we click here, you can see we have all the directions of this node. So south, um, if we click on this item card, you can see we have some options. And inside this, we have an insert by default, and then we have an extract as the next one. We have a stock, and then we have a sensor, which uh, all of these have some different things that they can do. But the main ones you wanna look at is insert and extract. Those are important. Let's set this one to extract for right now. Once it's set to extract, you can choose the rate. Now to make the rate go higher, for example, this will let you go all the way up to eight by default, and it will be a maximum of 20, or the lowest it'll go is 20 ticks, and it'll send eight items every 20 ticks. To increase this, you gotta put an overclocker of some sort. There is also an, uh, a node overclocker. Um, and I think these might stack in there. Um, so yeah, 
this, but once you put this in, you can see this will let me increase it even more. So, and then also let me lower this number. So this will do 16 items every 15 ticks. Now to filter, you would use one of these basic filter items and you could put a filter in here and it would only extract the items that you have filtered. By default, right now it's looking for an insert in the network, which there isn't one. Uh, all there, well, actually there is one because we did just put this in this. So on this side, it's looking for this one right here, which is by default set to insert. And it's, it's basically saying, hey, it's connected to this chest. If I put anything in here, it's gonna extract and insert into this chest. So we should be able to see that by just grabbing some random blocks, putting them in there, and notice they get transferred over. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's get into how this can get a little bit more advanced and more similar to Ender.io. This has the ability to set channels. So if we have this card extracting right now and it's going over here, um, what if I want this chest right here to, to extract and uh, send over here? I mean, we, we can do that. We can go ahead and say, hey, item card. I want you to send. If we go, this will be on the up. We can say, hey, extract. But here's the cool part. We can actually define channels. So this right here is the channel for everything. And this is a redstone channel. Um, so if I set this to orange, um, now this should only extract things that are orange or it should only send the things that have channels that are orange. Um, so this insert card that is over here, that is on the north, it won't send to it. So if I place items in, there's no way to send it because it doesn't have the ability to send to this one. But what I can do is I can place this card here, and now that it is on a separate channel, I can go to the up, and if I set this to the orange channel, then it will start sending the items. So this is very reminiscent of Ender.io, in my opinion, on how it can send. But this thing can send, I believe, 64 items every tick, which is incredibly fast, and uh, is what we're actually gonna be using to route all of the stuff for our sieves. So in total, I should have eight things I'm sieving, I do believe. Um, so we have gravel, sand, dust, basalt, soul sand, crushed netherrack, crushed instone, and crushed skystone. Those are all things that I want to sieve at the moment. Um, of course, things later on we could probably potentially add to it. Now here's where things might get a little bit confusing because I'm gonna be using a thing called an energy condenser. Uh, this is from Project E. It is a little expensive, costing a little bit of dark matter. Other than that, it is quite cheap. Um, but what I'm gonna be using this for is, for example, a thing like sand. Let me go ahead and demonstrate how that's gonna work. Um, so all I have to do is place down cobblestone. Cobblestone will be generated into the energy condenser. And all I need is some sand because sand costs EMC. I can convert said sand just like that, I can convert that cobblestone directly into sand. How cool is that? So I think putting some item frames on here, it really helps kind of allow me to see what items are what as I set this up. We will put lava there. Let's put the igneous, let's go ahead and put the, place the lava down. Igneous extruder right there. And then blue ice right here. And as you can see, basalt is being generated perfectly right here. All right, with everything in place, let's go ahead and get our nodes placed down and get them started working. Basically, just consider an, if, a, if a node's next to something, it is can, is able to be connected to a block. Um, so, look, we need one here, here, and here. And we also are going to need one here and one on top of this, just like that. I believe that will work. I don't know if this can actually interact with this block and pull the cobble directly from that. We'll be able to see here in a minute. Can we connect this to this? Let's see, this to this. Actually, we need to shift to that. That's connected. That to that. Um, and then we will say this to this this to this now first of all let's see if we can't get power routed to all of these machines and get them actually functioning so i'm going to place this here make sure it is set and i should be able to hook up an energy card to this side and as you can see that right there connects directly to it over the energy is pretty simple uh, energy on this side says right here 
we need to set this to extract. So that's going to be extracting. We have transfers amounts. We'll leave that for right now. Good thing everything else is set because I should be able to place this here. And as you can see, that's getting power. Place this on this side. That should be getting power. And I have to do that for all of these machines. And now everything should be connected. And this is now receiving power. Okay. Well, the more I look into this, the more I realize I'm going to have to change my entire setup here. Oh boy, because this, because it doesn't have an inventory, which is such a pain, it doesn't allow, like, it doesn't allow me to pull from any side. So what I have to do is I have to have this connected to the sieve in some way, regardless. Um, and it has to be on this outer facing edge, which... I mean, I might be able to do just by taking this and moving it out one. That is possible. I mean, I honestly had an idea set up to make this work and actually look good, but I I'm blaming it on the mod. I'm blaming it on this mod just for it simply not having a way to keep have an inventory. It it ugh, that is super frustrating. Um, but this should allow me here. I'm going to need way more nodes than I thought I was going to need. Um, but this, this should work. Uh, basically what I'm doing here is I have nodes now at the bottom. I have nodes at the top that I've got to connect just to give this power basically because I can't extract or anything from this inventory and the hammers are going to send the items. Now, the ones that don't get them, they should be a little bit easier to set up. Um, I'm still going to need a node here and I might actually be able to clean this up on the top. I, I think I'm just going to leave them on the top just to keep things looking the same. So now all of this should make a lot more sense. Ah, at least I, I tried. Um, so at the moment, this does not have a sieve, but this will receive gravel. I need uh, this to pull from here. So item card, which is in here, right here. Item card is now pulling on the purple channel. Let's set it to channel one. It's pulling cobblestone. Make sure we're on the right side, right? Item card. Place it here. So this needs to be pulling, extracting cobblestone. And then we need it to go here. And so we need an item card here that is on insert on the orange channel. And that should be sending cobblestone, which it is doing. I can actually see it. It's going to get sieved up or, or crushed up. Then it's going to go into here and then everything goes down here. Now, um, eventually, like I said, I'm going to have the white channel connected to this and I'm just going to be able to place an item card and set it to extract. And then we're going to send all these items to a very specific chest. But let's first figure this out. We'll worry about that some other day. I've got to get all of this hooked in and get these cards configured. So for the second one, pretty simple. I have cobblestone being converted into netherrack. We may have to upgrade the cobble gin later on, but extract card on the second channel. Then it's just putting it over here, turning it into netherrack. Netherrack will get crushed. It'll end up going into the sieve and then this will get sieved. Okay, so the same process is gonna happen for just about everything. This is the only one that is gonna be a little bit weird. Considering we have to use the enrichment chamber, and we have to have one of the items that this sets up. So this will end up being something that gets filtered. Everything else is pretty straightforward. For example, this right here is actually going to be end stone. So end stone is just the same as the cobblestone or same as the uh, netherrack. I'm going to basically place it, it, this makes more sense. Place this here. And then I will set the channel because white isn't used. I'll set the channel to three. And then I'll leave it like that for right now so we don't have any items going anywhere. And then just set this one right here. Use the item card. Make sure it's also set to channel three. Go back. And then I will set this to extract. And that should now be pulling out in stone, sending it over here to be crushed. Straightforward, right? <laughs> really simple, says Chosen Architect. Oh, I hope you guys are getting this. So I think this actually turned out better than I thought. Um, so I do have everything down here running and let me kind of explain this as best I can. So this uh, is c turning things into netherrack. This is pulling on channel two. It's extracting from this chest and then it is pushing the items into here, the netherrack. 
And uh, of course, later on, I can upgrade this and it's using channel two, right? Just to demonstrate this, this is using channel one. This is using channel two, channel three. This will be separate. This will be another channel later on uh, because I have this one set to channel four, I think. And you can see this one's a little bit different, but because these are all connected, I am, I am basically extracting on this one on channel four from this chest and right here on channel four, I am inserting. So this is where I said it's very similar to Ender IO, except for I know all the lasers and everything. Um, but same thing on this one, very simple. It's pulling from this chest, inserting into here. The reason there's these down here is because this is what I'm gonna be using to pull out of the barrel once these start sieving items, which they're not doing just yet because I don't have sieves in them. Same over here, you can't really see it, but there's a laser down there because it is on the downside. And this is on channel seven, pulling that and then inserting on channel seven right here. I hope this didn't go over your head. This is actually a really good introduction into how laser IO works. Um, now, instead of using channels, we could have used filters, but I think channels was way better of a sol uh, use case uh, for this. So now all I have to do is get the sieves placed in. And uh, I think you can even enchant the meshes. Well, we'll see if those work. But I remember correctly, the meshes can, can be enchanted. I just don't know if they work in here. I'm going to test that out. Yeah, no. They show that they can be enchanted, but they're not enchantable, it looks like. Or at least the netherite ones aren't. Which, by the way, netherite is what I'm going to be making them all. So, let's let the party begin. We place the meshes in. I don't have any upgrades on the machines yet, but I place the mesh in. And these should all start functioning. Well, this one not yet. We'll, we'll worry about that here in a second. But all of these should start working. Looky there. Let's see. Are they placing things? Yes, they are. All the stuffs is going down in the barrel. Now, I need all of the items that these barrels generate. I need them to go somewhere. And what better place than an ender chest? This ender chest is going to allow me to send the items somewhere else from one place to another. And so I'm actually wanting to set up a drawer network over here that will support all of these items and should be able to fit all in the drawers over here. Uh, that's the plan at least. Uh, but first, I wanna get everything hooked to this. So all I need to do is just place the item filter or place the items just like this on all of the barrels, making sure they're facing the right side. Oh well, yeah, I gotta get them all done. Um, and then this is where we are going to utilize that basic zero channel and uh, we're gonna get this sieve set up. So I have all of these put in. Now the ones that are on the bottom that are connected to the barrel, these need to be set to extract and they're gonna be extracting onto that channel as you can see right here. They are gonna be pretty slow. We're gonna be able to upgrade these later on, but right here, and of course I can always increase the amount. I'm gonna have to do that too, just like that. Now, here's where things are going to change because um, I need to, I, I, I'm gonna have to affect these in a way to make sure that I can get a very specific dust up here to be able to sieve. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use a filter on the insert. And uh, I don't know if these on insert, do they have channel priorities? They do have a priority. And so I'm going to make sure this is a higher priority on this particular network. So let's do that. Um, now I am going to need AE2, and what is the item? It is the dust, this right here, Skystone dust. So, basic item filter, very basic. We are gonna put Skystone dust, that is literally what we want, and then we're gonna allow, let's see, deny, allow, let's go to make sure to set that to allow, and let's go in and get our network configured to make sure this is a priority. So on this node, we have the item on insert, and then we'll put the basic filter that is filtered in here and we'll set the priority to one so it's higher than everything else. And it's on channel zero. And this should, once it starts pulling from the one that generates this dust, let's see, I don't know which one generates this dust. This right here, the sky stone. Um, one of these has done it, but this should right here, Send it into this. I did have to configure the side so the back is input, the front is output. And let's make sure this is set. Actually, we might need to set this 
as an extract. No, this is an insert. Oh, it's already running. So there we go, insert. And then we need this card to be an extract. And that is going to pull. And this card is going to be an insert, uh, except for we need this card to not be on channel zero. Let's put this on channel eight. And then this item card will be put on channel eight as well. And there we go. We have Skystone going in there getting sieved. Actually, this uh, this needs to be crushed. Hmm. How am I going to do that? Actually, you know what? We need this item card removed. And we need that to go down here. <laughs> uh, yeah, this has the settings in it, doesn't it? I guess it doesn't matter. Yes, it does channel eight. So yeah, that actually needs to go down here to be crushed, not here. There you go. It's actually working. Perfect. Just what I needed. That is exactly what I want working. And then this is going to get sieved. And then all the stuff will go down here. And yet again, we have the side, this side. I think if we click on the side, it actually pulls that side up. And then make sure these are all set to extract and we're, we're good to go. Right? Extract. Yeah. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you learned something new. Oh my goodness. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button. As like I said, these videos do take a long time and that is the simplest way to say thank you for making the videos. Guys, I would love to thank the sponsor of today's video. And then my friends, of course, is going to be a huge thanks going to Redev Gaming. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member. And of course, guys, if you are interested in joining the Discord and becoming a member yourself, all you're going to do is go to discord.gg or slash chosen architect, or <laughs> chosen architect. My goodness, getting some own, own name. Oh, my goodness. And uh, yeah, you can support over there if you feel like it or just join the amazing community of over 25,000 members. Guys, that's a lot. And of course, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something as uh, I learned something every time I play this. This was actually my first time using Dyer's mod. The lasers mod. This is so good. I love it. Laser IO. Ah, thank you so much, Dyer. If you uh, if you catch this. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.